Hello, in this lecture, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the scapolunate ligament, a very important ligament between the scapoid and the lunate in the wrist. The ligaments in the wrist can be basically divided into extrinsic ligaments, which are ligaments that connect the radius and the ulna to the carpus, and the intrinsic ligaments, which are ligaments between the carpal bones. There is an area in the center known as the space of Orira, which is fairly deficient of ligaments and prone for dislocation of the carpus. In this slide, you can clearly see the dorsal intercarpal ligaments here, which is between the carpus. This is the scaphoid, this is the lunate, and this is the capitate. And here we see the dorsal uh, lunar triquitral ligament, and here we see the radial triquitral ligaments, which are extrinsic ligaments, and these are intrinsic ligaments. The scapholunate ligament is a C-shaped ligament, which has three parts, a very thick dorsal component, which is the most important part of the ligament as it's a primary stabilizer for the scapholunate joint and a thin volar component and a membranous part. The membranous part plays very little significance and the volar component is an important rotational stabilizer of the wrist. In this view where the scaphoid has been removed, you can see the C-shaped ligament with the thick component, which is the dorsal part, the scapholunate ligament, which provides the strong stability between the lunate and the scaphoid. The radioscaphoid-lunate ligament that is in the volar surface has got blood supply that provides the circulation to the ligament complex and partly to the scaphoid. Here once again you can see the scaphoid-lunate ligament. It's one of the commonest ligaments to be injured, accounting for about 5% of injuries of the wrist and it can be classified as an occult, dynamic, with significant carpal collapse and a slack wrist being the most severe form. Here you can see there's a widening of the gap, which is an important sign. Here we see the kin kinetics that occur in the wrist. As the wrist is deviated radially, there is pressure placed on the scaphoid and if the ligament is deficient, the scaphoid-lunate ligament, the scaphoid would flex and there will be a widening of the gap between the scaphoid and the lunate. This, on ulna deviation, the scaphoid will return to its original position and the gapping may be less. Clinical assessment for carpal instability would be the use of the Watson shift test, which is to place the thumb over the scaphoid tubercle and to radially and ulnarly deviate and on radial deviation you can see the flexion of the scaphoid putting pressure over your thumb. A gap of more than 3 mm on, radi on radiography would indicate there is an abnormal gapping between the scaphoid and the lunate and an angle of scaphoid lunate angle of more than 60 degrees indicates there is carpal instability between the scaphoid and the lunate. For the investigations in the form of uh, MRI and arthroscopy can be. Here are the radiological features. The increase in this distance between the scaphoid and the lunate called a teritomal sign. You can see that. At the same time, you can see the signet ring sign due to the flexion of the scaphoid due to the uh, deviation of the scaphoid. Here you can see the scaphoid lunate angle becoming 90 degrees. This is this axis of the lunate, and this is the long axis of the scaphoid, and this indicates there's flexion of the scaphoid. These are the signs of carpal instability. Here is the summary of the various findings in scaphoid lunate dissociation.